Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Friday, the last day of most people's work week. And before we get started, though, we got to jump into take five one more time. So we've been recapping the message from Sunday entitled Comfortable Chains, where we're talking about the Israelite slavery in Egypt and their exodus from there, how God sent the 10 plagues on Egypt and Pharaoh and convinced Pharaoh to free the Hebrew slaves and allow them to go out into the wilderness in search of their promised land. And uh, we, we followed them all the way up to about the Red Sea there. One thing we, we, we've talked a lot about, the, how I believe that Israel had become comfortable in their chains, how they had become comfortable in slavery. But one thing we really haven't talked about since Monday when we read it is our main text. We, our main text was four verses in Exodus chapter 8, and I want to reread that this morning as we kind of conclude this message this week. Exodus chapter 8, verses 20 through 23, the Bible says, Then the Lord told Moses, Get up early in the morning and stand in Pharaoh's way as he goes down to the river. Say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, then I will send swarms of flies on you, your officials, your people, and all of the houses in Egypt. The Egyptian homes will be filled with flies, and the ground will be covered with them. Watch this next verse. But this time I will spare the region of Goshen, where my people live. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord, and that I am present in the heart of your land. So I read that and I realized God made the Israelites endure the first three plagues. This plague of flies was the fourth plague. And when I read that, I was a little caught off guard because I've never, I've never heard before that Israel had to endure the first three plagues. That the plagues wasn't for them or so. I thought the plagues was for Pharaoh and for Egypt to convince him to let the Israelite people go, to free them from their bondage, to free them from their slavery. I've studied, I've read, I remember Sunday school lessons, and I, I, all my life I've heard about these ten plagues that God sent on Egypt, but I, I never realized that the Hebrew people had to endure the first three plagues. So I set out on this quest to figure out why, because one thing I do know is that if something is in Scripture, there's a reason that it's there. And so I set out on this quest several, several months ago to try to figure out why the Hebrew people would have to endure the first three plagues. And, and I told you all this week that I really think that the reason God sent the plagues and the reason God allowed the Hebrews to have to endure the first three plagues is because they had become comfortable in their chains. It would be really easy for us to think that God allowed them to go through the first three plagues as the consequences of their comfort in Egypt, but really, I think this was God's way of pushing them out of the nest, so to speak. This was God's way of, of pushing them and pushing them into their freedom because I think that he knew that if he didn't make them experience some of the consequences of sin, because ultimately that's what the plagues were, right? Right? They were a, a, a metaphorical representation of God's judgment on sin. And I think that God knew that if he didn't allow the Israelites to experience some of the consequences of sin, that there might be some that were apt to stay in Egypt, to stay in their bondage. As we read several chapters later after the Exodus, as we read on into the wilderness part of the Israelites' journey, we see that time after time after time, they continued to complain and want to go back to Egypt. They, they said that their lives were better in Egypt than they were in the wilderness. And I think God knew before all of that happened that Israel had become comfortable in their chains. And if he didn't do something to push them out of the nest, to make them uncomfortable enough to leave, that they might stay, or at least some of them. And I think the message for us this week could be the same, should be the same. So that For those of us that have found comfort in our chains, in the, the chains of slavery, the affliction, the bondage of slavery, for those of us that are saved, our soul is saved, and we're going to go to heaven when we die, 
but we have continued to 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 live in and to be bound by the sin that has bound us since birth. For those of us that have found comfort in our chains, there does come a time when God will push you out of the nest, when God will make you uncomfortable enough that you have to leave, that, that you that you desire to leave more than you desire to stay. Some of you may have experienced situations like that before, but I'm telling you, I, I want you to use this message, this sermon that we've talked about, this story that we've talked about all week long, I want you to use this as your reasoning, as your pushing out of the nest, so to speak, that as your convincing to leave your comfortable chains, to leave the, the, the affliction and the bondage of slavery that you've become so comfortable in, I want this to convince you to move now before God sends a worse thing on you to convince you to leave your chains. I, I really think that if the Israelites would have chosen before the plagues were sent on Egypt, that they were not comfortable in their chains, maybe they wouldn't have had to endure those first three plagues. If the whole nation of Israel would have been tired of their slavery, they would have been tired of their affliction, if they would have been ready to fight even for themselves, even if God wasn't on their side, if they would have been ready to revolt and lead a revolution, I, I think maybe they wouldn't have had to endure those first three plagues. But because they were comfortable, God made them endure something hard to push them out of their comfort zone. And while some of you may think that that's harsh, that God is punishing them for something, I, I don't really think that those were consequences of, of certain things. I think the real consequence of comfort would have been never leaving slavery, never trying to leave the, the, the affliction of, of slavery there, and never seeing and becoming all that God had called them to be all that God had promised for them, the promised land, everything that he had promised for them in their lives, the real consequence would have been staying in, your sla in their slavery and never experiencing God's best. I don't want that for you and me. I don't want that for us. We're saved. Most of us that are watching, I believe, are probably saved, going to heaven, ready to meet God. If you're not, we need to have a different conversation. But for those of us that are and have continu continuously, year after year of our life, remained comfortable, continued in the bondage of our sin just because it's comfortable. It's more, it's easier to stay in our sin than it is to fight for freedom. I want you to understand that the worst consequence of all, the worst thing of all, is to live your entire life bound by that sin that Jesus died to give you freedom in. The worst thing is to live bound by that sin and never experience the freedom that God has for you, the best that He has to offer is on the other side. It's the best that he has to offer is freedom from sin. So every one of us has comfortable chains. What are yours? Remember, our comfort has consequences and we can choose our chains. We can choose to be a slave to, to sin or we can be choose to be a slave to Christ. God has been pushing you all week long, trying to wake you up and push you out of your comfort zone. Will you listen today. Hey, I have so enjoyed being with you this week. Until next time, I hope you have a great day today. I can't wait to see you Sunday morning. Have a great day.